Okay, let's take a look at this pelvis, okay? Now, right off the bat, let me tell you that really there's no such thing as a pelvic bone or a hip bone, uh, although others might maybe tell you different. For my class, we'll say there's no such thing, okay? When you're looking at what you might think of as a pelvic bone, you're really looking at three individual bones. They just happen to fuse together as we matured and reached adulthood. Um, so we're going to name the three bones separately. You should never ever have an answer for a practical that it says it's on the pelvis or pelvic or hip bone, okay? And of course you're aware that when somebody breaks a hip, it's incredibly rare that a hip breakage is the pelvic bone unless there's some high trauma or high impact type of injury. Um, a, a fractured hip is typically the neck of the femur and I think you're aware of that. So let's take a look and see what we find, okay? Now, first of all, you see this opening, this big giant frame, and it's the only one that's in the entire hip. And there I go saying it, right? This is your obturator foramen. And the obturator foramen is going to face kind of anterolateral. So when I have the pelvis in my hand, or this hemipelvis, or what you might call an os coxae, I can tell the anterior aspect by finding that obturator foramen. When I look kind of at the posterior aspect, I see that a lot of this kind of a huge part of the ilium there is nice and flat. And then I get to this area of the ilium that's roughened. And this little roughened area is the auricular surface where the sacrum is going to attach. So of course this has to face medially because the sacrum is wedged in here between this half of the pelvis and the other. So now I know where the front is. Now I know where the medial aspect is. So facing laterally is this big kind of giant cup region. And this is the area for the articulation of the femoral head. This is called your acetabulum. So if I have the obturator foramen facing anterior or anterolateral, I've got the auricular surface for the sacrum facing medially, and then I've got my acetabulum laterally what I must be looking at now is the right half of the pelvis, okay? So if I go back to this acetabulum, this is kind of the junction point where the three, the three individual bones of the pelvis meet. So on this medial aspect of what we'll call the pelvic bone, even though I just said don't call it that, this is actually your pubic bone, okay? You have what's referred to as your pubic tubercle, your pubic symphysis is going to join to a piece of fibral cartilage, which is going to then join to the left half of the pelvis. And then I have a superior ramus of the pubis, and I have an inferior ramus of the pubis. Okay? So this area then would be your pubic bone. Now if I go to the inferior aspect of the acetabulum and I grab down here, I am now grabbing a hold of the ischium. Okay? So the identifying features on the ischium are the ischial ramus, which that is going to then fuse to the inferior pubic ramus. And of course, this is a model of an adult bone, so you don't see that fusion. So I've got inferior pubic ramus. This would be my ischial ramus. And then when I go on the bottom, I've got this big roughened area. We're going to call that the ischial tuberosity. You might think of that as your butt bone. If you stick your fingers in your cheek and push up a little bit, you'll feel that hard bony prominence. That is also the origin are the three muscles that make up the hamstrings, the semimembranosus, semitendinosus, and bicep femoris, okay? That's why you'll often see when somebody pulls a hamstring, they grab the bottom of their butt because that's where your ischial tuberosity is. So if this is ischium and this is pubic bone, then everything else must be ilium. That's ilium with an I, I-L-I-U-M. Remember, I-L-E-U-M is the distal part of your small intestine, okay? So, as I look at the ilium from the lateral aspect, this part is anterior, this part is posterior. So I have four bumps. I have one on the front on top, I got one on the front on the bottom, I got one on the back on top, and one in the back on bottom. Those are referred to as your ischial spines. Uh, I'm sorry, not your ischial spines, your iliac spines, because we're on the ilium, the iliac spines, okay? So the iliac spine, we usually abbreviate IS. So you're going to see we have a PSIS, a PIIS, an ASIS, and an AIIS. The ASIS is my anterior superior iliac spine. AIIS, anterior, anterior inferior iliac spine. PSIS, posterior superior iliac spine. PIIS, posterior 
inferior iliac spine. Just adjacent to the PIIS, we have this big notch here. That big notch is smaller, I'm sorry, this big notch is bigger than this small one. This is your greater sciatic notch. This is your lesser sciatic notch. And then this little sticky out thing that separates the two notches, that now is your ischial spine because again, that's part of this ischium bone, okay? In the medial aspect of the ilium, we found the auricular surface already for the sacrum, but I don't believe that's on your list. And then the rest of this area is referred to as the iliac fossa, okay? That's where the iliacus muscle, which is part of the iliopsoas complex, that's where that comes from. And then up here, this is referred to as your iliac crest. Women back in the day used to wear their belt above the iliac crest. If you palpate your ribs, you have rib, rib, rib as you go down. Then you get to some fluff where you get into your abdomen. And then you get down to hardness again at your pelvis. And this is what you're feeling, the iliac crest. So a quick review then of the pelvis. I have my pubic bone with my pubic tubercle, my pubic symphysis, and my inferior and superior pubic ramus. I have my obturator foramen. I have my acetabulum. I have my ischial tuberosity. I've got my ischial ramus. I have my ischial spine. Above it, greater sciatic notch. Below it, lesser sciatic notch. I have my ASIS, my AIIS. Both of those you'll be palp are going to be palpable on yourself. You can feel those. You have your PSIS, which is easily palpable your PIIS a little bit tougher to get at. Then I've got my iliac crest and my iliac fossa. And there's an overview of the pelvis.